Let's get it started. All right, so I'm going to go to Insight. I have already opened it here. By the way, between the last video and the current video, I installed the latest version of uh, Insight. It looks basically the same. The only thing that has changed is that the uh, Add to Plot uh, uh, section uh, used to be over here, and now it's uh, over here. It's the, this little icon over here. So whenever you create a chart in Insight, remember that if you want to edit it features, instead of clicking on the Add to Plot, which used to be on this side of the screen, now it is over here. It's this little bar graph with the plus symbol. It's exactly the same. Just click on that, and that will let you access all the uh, options over here. The Customize Plot, Add the Trend Lines, Change the Axis and Labels. There are a few new options over here that I encourage you to explore. But as you can see, I have already created this graphic that shows a child mortality over five country by country. Each series of bubbles that you have over here shows you the drop in child mortality all over the world, right? So in, in all countries in the world. I'm not going to bore you uh, showing you how to create this graph. If You can use your own graph for the current exercise because I'm, I'm not going to focus on this specific graphic. You can just replicate what I do on screen with any chart uh, that you yourself create in Insight. But if you're interested in creating this chart, the data is in the folder that I mentioned in the previous video. You can download it and then just drop uh, the, score, uh, the score variable over here and then the year variable over here and this will be the result. Okay, so it will show you years on the x-axis, child mortality under 5 per 100,000 or per 10,000, I don't remember, or per 1,000 people uh, on the y-axis, and then it will create this, uh, this chart. And then if you want to add the line, just go to the trend line section in the Add to Plot uh, feature down here. Okay, so that you already know how to create all these. All right, so now what we are going to do is to export this chart as a PDF, okay? Because if we export it as a PDF, we will be able to later on open it up in Illustrator and then edit it. So if you want to save the chart, you can certainly detach these from the uh, current screen as we did before, or you can just click on this Save Plot icon over here. It would ask you which format, which file type you want. We don't want a JPEG because a JPEG is not a vector file. For, uh, sorry, vector file. No PNG, no bitmap, no TIFF. Any of these files will not be useful for our purposes. So choose PDF and then save location. Just tell inside where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it for on the desktop. Okay, so I'm going to select desktop here. I'm going to click on OK. And then just give the file a name. So I'm going to call this, for example, one my chart or something like that. Any name that you want. Okay, and then you click on save. So the file has been saved on our desktop. So immediately after, I'm going to go to Adobe Illustrator. You can see that I have this file already open over here to show you the before and the after. And just click on Command Open to or Command O to open the file. So I'm going to go over here, my chart. There you go. So here's the, the chart that I created. Uh, I'm going to click here on continue. There you go. And this is my chart. So we are ready to get started editing and, and changing this file. Now, a very important thing to remember before we get started uh, editing this file is that anything that we create with Insight, and this is also valid uh, for many other software tools like Tableau or Excel or other software tools that let you create uh, statistical charts, is that when you export the chart as a PDF, as a vector object, right? Uh, they they usually come. It usually comes with a lot of elements that can be removed and should be removed. Okay. The thing is that right now, if you go to the and select the white selection tool over here in Illustrator, you will be able to select any element on the chart. So I could select that white back, that gray background over here, and I can remove it. I can you know the label of this this legend over here is absolutely unnecessary. All right. I already know that this is the trend line. This is the smoother. So I can get rid of that. I can just mark key and then get rid of that. You know, I don't really like to box things out like that, so I'm going to select that line and click twice on delete to delete it, but as you can see, it deletes just one segment. So sometimes you will need to select, you know, the same line. It's not the same line. It's actually, if I select this line and click twice to erase, right, there, there may be another line behind it, and I will need to I will need to erase it as well. And then I can select this black line and click twice on delete, and there you go. So little by little, we can start cleaning up this chart a little bit, right? There, there's also says that there is 2,600 miss, missing values over here. We don't care that much about these, but if we want to keep this piece of text, I'm just going to move it temporarily to the right. You know, we may want to change that. We will need to add a, a title. So I'm going to move all these labels out of the screen, all right, just to make room 
a, to be able to work okay all those labels we can bring them back later okay so the first thing that I usually do when styling a chart is to remove things that are re don't really need for example these tick marks up here I don't think that they are necessary so I'm going to marquee with the white selection tool to just select their upper uh, anchor points and then I'm going to click twice on delete on the keyboard just to remove them okay and, and these tick marks on the on the right hand side may not be necessary either so I'm going to select them and just remove them now the thing is that when you are removing things you are removing visible things but there may be invisible objects as well and these are really important so I would encourage you whenever you are uh, removing unnecessary features or elements in a graphic is to go to wireframe mode clicking on command Y or control Y on your P if you have a PC it will be control Y if you're on a Mac it's command Y command Y will take you to the wireframe mode and this will show you invisible elements so as you can see there is a line here for example that we didn't see before right so this line will not get printed if you print the file but it's good practice to clean these up, okay, to remove this line, right, just in case. Now, as you can see, I cannot really select it, and I don't really know why. It may be because the line is locked, so I'm going to go to the object menu, and I can see that everything is disabled, so that line, for some reason, uh, may be just a bug or something, but at least I try to, I try to select it. Or it may be because the line is on a different layer, so I'm going to go to the window menu, layers in Spanish that will be capas layers and as I can see I only have one layer therefore I don't really know what that line is doing over there and there's another a, another horizontal line over here all right now we may be able to remove that line a little bit later on but for now you also can see that there is a, another there's a boundary there is a like a like an outline all right even if I remove all the black lines that I had before there's still a box here bothering me so I'm going to select it by clicking once and I'm going to click twice on that just to remove it okay now as you can see the line once I have when I did that okay when I start when I removed that that rectangle surrounding it this line that was invisible before it uh, become visible okay and here's the reason why that happened okay this may be this is the whole reason why you may also want to click you may always uh, uh, want to click on command Y to make the invisible visible I'm going to undo, all right, to go back here. So the that line that I raised before will be back. As you can see, the gray lines that were here uh, have disappeared. Why that happens? Well, this box that we are not seeing, that we can only see when I click on Command Y and then I select it. Okay, let me see if I can select it now. There you go. Now it is selected. Okay, but it's invisible. Now this line here, this outline, this boundary, it's a mask. Okay, and it is masking those lines that appear when I click on Command Y. And as long as those lines are masked, all right, that's the reason why I couldn't select them. So if I can click here, the lines are not selectable because they are masked. Okay, when I select this invisible a, a outline that I have over here and then click twice on delete to delete it, those lines become visible. They are not masked anymore. Therefore, now I can select that one and erase it and this one also and erase it let me see if i can click that there click twice on delete there you go and then i click on command y again just to make sure that i don't have any other element here that i may want to remove so always click on command y to see wireframe mode and remove all the elements that are not necessary because those can be those can make your file get really really messy if you don't remove them okay at this very early stage of the process